Good morning, and welcome to First English Lutheran Church. We are excited to have you worshiping with us today. One quick announcement for you is to make sure to come uh, pick up one of the Advent bags that we've made up for you. They'll be in the, the breezeway there here at our church, so you can come by and pick one up if you'd like one. If you'd like one uh, delivered to you, uh, you can call the church office and let us know, and we'll have that arranged for you. With all of that, I'll ask you to take a deep breath. Center your heart and your mind to prepare yourself for worship. We begin with confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Have mercy on us, O God. We confess confess that that we have have sinned sinned against against you and against against our neighbor. We have have built built walls walls instead of tables and have have turned turned away from the stranger. We have have sought glory for ourselves and have have treasured that which which does not satisfy. satisfy. Help Help us to love love you as you love, love, to welcome welcome those you send, and to treasure treasure mercy and justice. justice. Turn us us from from our ways to your ways and free us us to serve those in need. Amen. God, who makes all things new, forgives your sin for Jesus' sake and remembers them no more. Lift up your heads and your hearts. Yours is the kingdom of God, and God's people said, Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn is number 867, In Thee is Gladness. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house 
and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Let us pray. Almighty, your sovereign purpose brings salvation to birth. Give us faith to be steadfast amid the tumults of this world, trusting that your kingdom comes and your will be done. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from Daniel. At that time, Michael the great prince, the protector of your people, shall arise. There shall be a time of anguish such as never occurred since nations first came into existence. But at that time your people shall be delivered, and everyone who is found written in the book. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky, and those who lead to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be Thanks to be God. God. Our second reading this morning is a reading that comes from Hebrews. Every priest stand day by day at his service, offering again and again same sacrifices that can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered for an all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. And since then, he has been waiting until his enemies would be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering, he has perfected for all time those who are sanctified. And the Holy Spirit also testifies to us. For after saying, this is the covenant that I will make with them for after those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws into their heart and I will write them on their minds. And he also adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. So where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is through his flesh, 
And since we have a great peace over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart and full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us, let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love good and do good deeds, not neglecting to meet one another as a habit of son, but encouraging one another. And all the more you see the day approaching, this is the word of our God. Thanks be, Thanks to, God. be to God. Hallelujah, Lord, to whom shall we The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory, Glory to, to you, O Lord. Lord. As Jesus came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. Then Jesus asked him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left upon another. All will be thrown down. And when he was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, and John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us. When will these things be, and what will, there be, what will be the sign that these things are about to be accomplished? Then Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. But it, this is but the beginning of the birth pangs. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you, O Christ. Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. One of the older prayers of the day used the phrase, hear, read, mark, and learn, and inwardly digest this gospel. It's full of troubling images, images that cut too close to home, that sound too much like the atrocities that we see in the news today. Today, as we begin to get towards the last year of the church year, we get those end times readings, the prayer of the day reminds us that Holy Scriptures was, was written for our learning and to lead us from the blessed hope of everlasting life. This morning, then, we are encouraged to hear how this gospel offers us hope. When we do, we will deliver some very important skills, not just to cope, but more importantly, to hope. Hope skills are important because the situation Jesus describes to his disciples are ongoing. Those who first heard Mark's story of Jesus would have noticed just as we do. People claiming authority they don't have. Yes, and uh, we've seen it. Wars. Too many. Lord. Famines. Environmental disasters. Will there ever be an end? People have tried to pin down the text like this to one specific date. One time in history yet to come as if Jesus were describing one particular false messiah, one particular war, or one particular disaster. But Jesus isn't being specific, and at the same time, he is. Specific, a time did come when the temple was torn down. Not specific, generation upon a ge generation will experience hardship. Most importantly, the specific, the God who was the God then, the God who could be relied upon amidst all of this chaos and loss is still the God now. Here in the time of our wars, our environmental disasters, our famines, our false messiahs, our pandemic, and we will be in God's future. And into the beyond all time when we could read beyond today's reading in Mark 13, when heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Our gospel lesson appointed for this Sunday is, is kind of the apocalyptic writing. The word apocalypse means an, an unveiling or an uncovering of what was previously unknown or hidden. 
apocalyptic literature sounds and it abounds with this bizarre visions and strange symbolism. This, these writings emerge especially when people are in very desperate situations, in times of persecution, when their faith is under attack or in danger of being abandoned for the sake of safety. Because it was written in a time of persecution, these apocalyptic writings often use symbolic speech that makes it seem like a sealed book to those outside of the situation. That is always clear, though, that apocalyptic writing includes this chapter, which we hear just at the beginning of today's reading. It is written to give hope to the readers. It is written to keep our eyes focused on God and God's action in history and to give assurance that, despite appearances to the contrary, God is still God. God still reigns. The future belongs to God. The central theme in this literature is God's revelation concerning the coming of the kingdom of God, the fullness of God's reign. From the very beginning, the faithful of Israel, our spiritual forebearers, was, was oriented towards the future. God's work in history is purposeful, and events are pressing toward the realization of these divine goals for all of God's creation. History is not spinning in circles or repeating itself like the cycle of the seasons, nor is it governed by blind fate or by chance. Israel perceived that its history was part of this great divine drama under the direction of God is finally moving towards the end. In today's gospel, we hear just the beginning of Jesus' description of these events and the beginning part that participates kind of that inauguration of the kingdom of God in its fullness, which actually takes up all of Mark's 13th chapter. In it, Jesus is reminding his disciples that our time, our past, our present, and our future are in God's hands. Not that God controls every action as if there is no such thing as human choice or agency, but that God will work God's purposes out within the human history, within time and space on this earth, until God brings about the new heavens and the new earth. The disciples ask Jesus, when will this happen? And Jesus answers them by not answering them. Instead, he tells them to be faithful, not fearful, to set their minds on trusting and being aware rather than worrying about a date on the calendar. Jesus' words are meant to put an end to any speculation about when the end times will happen. Jesus says, don't worry, knowing, and don't worry about knowing when. That's not yours to know, but there are things you can know. The things you can know are hoping skills. These, the first of these hoping skills is to keep the big picture perspective, that really big picture, the God's eye view of human history. We are talking about something we can only know, part of, and our words for God and comprehension of God fall far short of the divine reality. Nonetheless, all scripture was written to give us hope, to give us a picture, to give us a divine promise and perspective in ways that even we humans can understand. So here's the big picture. God is at work, bringing everything to completion according to God's promises. God does not willingly cause the suffering of any of God's creatures, and it grieves the God who made us with a capacity for grief when some suffers, when anyone causes suffering. But even when the worst of the worst happens, we ex what we experience is redeemable. All is subject in time to God's purposes and plan. God is at work now, reaching out to us with a future that is whole and holy and blessed, even in the present small picture when we can't see it. One hoping skill is to focus on that really big picture. Another hoping skill is to get to know scriptures. It's related to keeping that, that big picture in view because scripture is our source along with tradition and reason, for knowing who God is, what God promises, and how God works. What faithfulness looks like, especially when we know God in Jesus Christ, when Jesus is urging his disciples not to be led astray by false messiahs, he's reminding them to cling to what they know about him, 
we will not be deceived and we will have a reason for hope if we know the scriptures, if we use them as a lens through which to view the whole world and how we make our way in the world. This is not a call for proof texting, for using one piece or one passage of scripture to justify our own actions or decisions. It is instead the much more challenging task of examining our whole lives in light of the whole body of scripture, not of knowing just a few beloved verses, but knowing the whole story, its shapes and its themes and its concerns. When we know how the story ends with victory over death and that the way to victory was through self-giving love that was willing to suffer and to die, we have a reason to hope now and in the future. A third hoping skill is this, expect trouble, but expect Christ even more. Jesus in Mark 13, as mentioned before, describes a scene that many of the Jewish people experienced not long after Jesus' time on earth. When the Romans once again cracked down on their subjects, the Romans desecrated, then destroyed the temple. This passage was, was saved as important, not just because it describes something that had in fact happened in the early days of Christianity, but because it also describes the reality of what has been true ever since. Christians should expect difficulties. Being faithful has consequences in the world. Being faithful has meant martyrdom and family divisions, executions, persecutions, poverty, estrangement, sacrifice. Not only is Christianity no magic charm against the harms that, that befall all human beings, accidents and sicknesses and death, Faithfulness means being open to, to more trouble still. Christians expect trouble. We expect Christ even more. Nothing shall separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Trouble is real, but Christ is more powerful than any trouble. Jesus wanted his disciples to know, his disciples then, and us, that we can be alert be open and watchful for all the signs of God at work in the world and for what God is not. For God is not of this world. Expect trouble, but expect Christ even more. Expect that we are not alone in the face of any trouble. When dreams fail and disasters come and we find ourselves against a wall or looking into the darkness, we may be at the end of our rope, but God is not at the end of God's rope. We are not alone. Christ is with us. We are promised the help of the Holy Spirit, and we are given another one, in the words of our reading from Hebrews, to provide one another to love and good deeds, not neglect to meet, uh, to meet together. And now, don't we have even more ways than ever to see one another's faces, to hear one another, even when we cannot be in the same room together, and to encourage one another, Christ is present when we reach out to one another, when we reach out to serve any who are suffering, especially when we've reached out in times of trouble. These are hoping skills for as long as we need them. Remember the really big picture. Get to know scripture. Expect trouble. Expect Christ more. Our hymn of the day is number 759, My Faith Looks Up to Thee. Let's sing verses 1 and 2.
And now I invite you to join in as we proclaim our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, you hold firm amid the changes of this world. Hear us now as we pray for the church, the world, and everyone in need. God, our creator, you show us the path of life. Bless faithful people everywhere with humility as they extend compassion to those who have experienced harm in religious spaces. Cultivate healthy congregations that tell of and enact your reconciling love. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our constant, you love our universe from beginning to end. As the seasons change, protect animals that migrate and hibernate. Bring them safely to a sheltered place in a more abundant season. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our ruler, you write your law on human minds and hearts. Give wisdom to all elected leaders and officials to govern with insight and compassion. Make them mindful of the well-being of all people so that your world will flourish. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our stronghold, you are present amid disaster. We pray for all those affected by natural disasters. Come to the aid of all survivors of earthquakes, famines, floods, hurricanes, and wildfires, and the first responders who support them. Calm their fear, supply their need, and be the solid ground beneath their feet. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our guide, you are greater than we can imagine. Surround congregations with your expansive inclusion. Be present in the midst of disagreements, differences, and questions. Unite people of diverse viewpoints in the love of Christ. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our beginning and our end, your beloved people shine like the brightness of the sky. We thank you for the lives of all who rest in your eternal mercy, from famous saints to the people we have loved. Assure us of your resurrection promise. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our hope and strength, we entrust to you all for whom we pray. Remain with us always. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and at all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the God, our bread of life, our table, and our food, 
You created a world in which all might be satisfied by your abundance. You dined with Abraham and Sarah, promising them life. And you fed your people Israel with manna from heaven. You sent your son to eat with sinners and to become food for the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life given for us and his rising from the grave, we await his coming again to share with us the everlasting feast. By your spirit, nurture and sustain us with this meal. Strengthen us to serve all in hunger and want. And by this bread and cup, make us the body of your Son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed hallowed be thy thy name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, come, thy thy will be done, done, on earth earth as as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us us this day our daily bread. bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Body of Christ, given for you. The blood of Christ, shed for you. Let us pray. Blessed Jesus, at this table you have been for us both host and meal. Now send us forth to extend our tables and to share your gifts until that day when all feast together at your heavenly banquet. Amen. Amen. Now, people of God, the beginning and the end who has written your names in the book of life, bless you and keep you in the grace and peace from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Our sending hymn is number 438, My Lord, What a Morning. Let's sing verses 1 and 3.
And now go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.